The Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and your local cable provider presents Cable Reports. Join us now as Cable Reports brings you up to date on current issues facing the Commonwealth through discussions with your local legislators and other policymakers from across Virginia. From the General Assembly and the City of Richmond, I'm Woody Evans for Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and Chantel Cable, connecting Virginians to their government. We're pleased to have Senator Frank Ruff with us today. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Woody. Pleasure to be back with you. Well, thanks for being here because we know how busy it is. This is about a week into uh, the short 2017 session of the General Assembly. From your perspective, how are things going so far? You sure it's just a week? It feels like it's been about three weeks. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been very hectic. Uh, as, as things have progressed over the years, uh, we have more with pre-filing. Uh, we, we have things ready to roll on day one. And so it's, it's, it's getting more, more hectic each year. And I don't think people understand that even though you're in session until the end of February this year, for example, there's work done throughout the year, especially a lot of committee work, as I understand it. Uh, yes, it, it cannot be recorded uh, action, but the, it, it, you learn more about issues that are going to be important or have been important to citizens and the, the, the assets of the county, the state, and how they interrelate to the public. Now, you've been around here how long now? Uh, you were on the House side first. I was in the House for seven years and have been in the Senate for 17 years. So almost a quarter of a century. Yeah, that sounds long, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what kinds of changes have you seen? I mean, th there have to have been a lot of changes uh, th that, that you've worked through here, uh, in terms of, not only in terms of colleagues, but advances in technology for, for members and, and other things. Well, obviously, with uh, computers, you used to see a lot more paper and uh, have to sort through a lot of things. And that, that you've seen that in the whole world. A thing that uh, probably affects things more than anything else is the, the pre-filing requirement uh, on legislation so that most of the bills are now coming in early. It used to be everybody would get up here and then want to look for co-patrons and so we spent a week doing nothing but looking for co-patrons and, and learning about our colleagues in the House and the Senate and developing relationships. Now, because of the pre-filing and you can co-patron online, uh, it's bang, you're ready to roll. And, um, it's, so that's the, you lose some of that uh, relationship thing. It takes a while. So what about... The does that make the process more efficient? Uh, th does that encourage the introduction of more bills from, from, from your perspective? It, it probably does because uh, if, if you're not communicating with each other, you may have five bills on the same issue. And then uh, nobody knows that until they get to the committee and say, oh, well, it's just about like this one and that one. So. Now, you see reports in the media about rancor and disagreement, but uh, I believe that most things are resolved here what, 80, 90 percent of the time? Most things are resolved, and not, not, not necessarily the satisfaction of everybody, right, but right, uh, right. You know, usually you can find some common ground on most issues. Uh, and, and if you can't, then it probably shouldn't have come up anyway. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you and I have discussed in the past the fact that uh, uh, your, your senatorial district is the largest in the Commonwealth. How many square miles? It takes two and a half days to get across. No, uh, <laughs> it's, um, I, I, I've not talked about mileage. I talk about time. And from my house to the far extent to the west is about two and a half hours. And the far extent to the east is about two and a half hours. So um, it's uh, much larger than most districts. And how many counties are included uh, in your Parts district? of 10 counties. Parts of 10. Mm -hmm. What's the largest county and in, in, in the largest uh, city, if you will, or town? Uh, the, the largest county would be Pennsylvania, which okay. I have a little more than half of. Okay. And, then, and I, the only city, well, I have two precincts in the city of Danville, and uh, I have all of the city of Chase City, and that is a uh, 
they only have 2,000 people, and they're not really a city, but that's right. the name. Right, right. <laughs> so. so you have a lot of windshield time when you need to visit your constituents. Oh, yes, yes. It, it means the meetings up here last longer, but they're all at the same place, so I don't have as much driving. But when, when I have an hour-long meeting in one direction and then I have to go to the other direction for another hour-long meeting, it's five or six hours of driving yeah. involved. As a result of that, are you able to hold town hall meetings, or is that something that makes sense for you? It, it, it really doesn't. We used to, and we didn't find that that was the most productive. Uh, if, if, if a constituent has a problem or an issue that I can't deal with on the phone, then I try to be close to where they are so that we can sit down and talk about something. It's almost like the thing that doctors used to do, making house visits. That's right, just about. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, so um, talk to us a little bit more about your district. Uh, what's, the, what, what's the level of employment now? I mean, for the last 20 years, your district has suffered economically. Well, percentages of unemployment are not a very good indicator anymore because we have had people who have been out of jobs longer than than the um, legal limits of saying you're on unemployment. Mm -hmm. So once you reach that, that 16 weeks, I think, uh, you just kind of drop off that list. So whenever you see unemployment numbers, they're fictitious. Right. Uh, the, uh, we have a lot of people who are underemployed, and that's the reason that we have been focused in particular on the Tobacco Commission, but also last year's legislation about workforce training of uh, how do you get people filling the jobs that are out there. You know, it's just as hard to find an electrician in Clarksville as it is in Richmond. It's just as hard mm -hmm. to find a plumber in uh, Brunswick County as it is to find one in Northern Virginia. Um, these are well-paying jobs, uh, but we have not focused on those in the past. Uh, we need welders, we need machinists, uh, and those are the type jobs that pay well. Uh, having them or having a pipeline of them coming online attracts manufacturing particularly, and that's, that's the forte of our region. Uh, you mentioned the Tobacco Commission. It's, it's been a real economic driver in southwest Virginia. Talk to us about the importance of that commission. That, that is money from the settlement of, um, that occurred in the late 90s with the tobacco growers and, the, and, the, um, and, and, and whether the, the settlement to keep, right. to try to reduce some of the lawsuits. And uh, it's been used for education. It's been used for the, clo the, the last dollar to bring an industry into the communities. Uh, it's helped us build um, some infrastructure type things that uh, where it was needed, uh, uh, a, a dentist office for Medicaid patients in South Boston, uh, just one, one thing after the other uh, when they, we see a need, we've tried to fill that gap. Now a passion of yours obviously is workforce development. Yes. Uh, talk to us in some detail about uh, why that's so important, especially in your district. Well, because we have a lot of good, hard-working, uh, work ethic people, um, but they do not have, in a, uh, in a lot of cases, the skills needed for today's industry. We have young people coming out of high school who, are, who have been led to believe that if they don't go to college, there is no future for them. So you have parents and teachers saying, go to college, go to college, go to college. If they can't get in, if their grades have not been good enough, or if they don't feel like they have the financial uh, wherewithal to do it, they feel like they're losers. So they end up doing things that do not advance them. Uh, they may pick up a job at, a, a, at minimum wage. They may not work anywhere. They may start uh, making money in the industry of drugs, uh, all sorts of things. And that we, we need to lift their belief in themselves and their future and their opportunity. The, the workforce bill that we passed last year, you can become a welder in six or eight weeks. You can become a truck driver in six or eight weeks. These are pay jobs that will pay um, well enough to take care of a family. If you're making that kind of income, then you can uh, find the spouse and settle in and create a nest. 
Now, are you able to keep those youngsters in the district even if they become a welder, become a truck driver? Uh, that's, that will remain to be seen. You, you have to at the same time recruit industry that uh, needs those things. Now, we, we, all communities need some of those things. Do we need too many? No, that becomes, they have to leave. Uh, but the, uh, the, the machinist, uh, precision machinist program at Danville Community College has been an extremely successful program. Uh, it's been going on for a number of years, but suddenly as, as the machinist at companies in half the state are, are at the point of retirement, they have become much more popular. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, so when Rolls-Royce needs somebody in, uh, in, in the Hopewell region, or if um, um, Riva or uh, B&W up in uh, Lynchburg uh, need machinists, uh, they go to those jobs and those well-paying jobs. Now, t to what extent has Go Virgi the Go Virginia initiative uh, been, been successful? Well, it's still in the f formative period. Uh, the first year was set aside to create the regionals uh, groups, and, and we decided on nine regions, and uh, then getting the public to buy in, getting the local government, the local economic developers to understand the program and uh, begin to feed uh, the, 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 that Go board, the Go Virginia board, to ideas that might be of value that the counties couldn't do on their own. Uh, we have always worked in a silo system in economic development. It's got to be in my county or it's not of any value. Um, this encourages them to work together, not only it, for some possible state grants, but also if two counties get together and recruit an industry uh, they can recover half the money of that cost uh, through receiving the income tax that would be, is paid to the state for over a six-year period. So they can recover a lot of that cost just by working together. Mm -hmm. If they work separately, they don't get a penny. I see. Now, 24 years ago when you first arrived in, in Richmond, was the textile industry still in Southside and, and was tobacco still going? Yes, and tobacco is still going today. And probably were growing a little bit more in Mecklenburg than, than we were then. Uh, the, the textile industry uh, went overseas for the most part. Uh, the um, Dan River had, at their high point, probably 4,000 people working. Clarksville had, uh, at their high point, had 2,200 people. So it, it was hard to replace those jobs, but those jobs were had the skill levels of the 50s and 60s and 70s. So a lot of those folks who uh, were left without a job were forced to try to figure out something new, a new, new adventure at a wrong time in their life. Uh, and and, and, and it, regrettably, some of them had to leave the area to continue to support their family. I don't think many people understand, however, that your district uh, includes uh, two of the largest economic drivers in the Commonwealth, and that's uh, forestry and agriculture. They become invisible. Yes. Because sure. there's not a concentration of uh, anything any one place. Uh, but yes, that uh, brings big uh, dollars to, to uh, the entire economy, not just in the growing, but in the transportation, uh, the, the pr product, whether it be cigarettes and tobacco, or whether it be uh, logs or whether it be paper products and then the export uh, market is is uh, is very dependent on uh, those agriculture products you understand that there's a significant export of soybeans uh, to China for example I, the where they go I'm not sure I know that uh, I know that uh, New Kent County had a, a grower who specialized in a particular type and quality that Japan wanted, and uh, and that kind of has built. Um, but yes, there's there's a, there's a good market all over the world for good quality products. Now, what what other types of crops 
or, or in your district that, uh, that that employ people still through small farms or even large ones? Well, you you have some you have corn, you have soybeans, you have um, it, the the wine market, the grape okay. wines have okay. has really blossomed throughout the state and, and including in southern Virginia. So we have. Um, Probably 15 wineries, um, so that's that's good not only for the growers, but it's also go, good for the uh, the tourism market. Sure. People people like to go out and uh, and visit other parts of the state. So what what do you go to? Well, that's a winery. Let's let's go by there and see what they have. Now, now what about forestry? Obviously, timber is is, is something that. Uh, is used for uh, a lot of different reasons, but uh, w what constitutes the timber industry in in, in your in, in your district? Well, you you have uh, uh, the the pine trees, which the great quality ones are the ones that you make two two by fours. Uh, others uh, of a lesser quality go into the chipped process, that then end up being made into paper. Uh, you also have um, uh, there's a strong market for um, the pellets for wood stoves, which has a limited market in this country, but it is a fantastic market in Europe, where a lot of those are shipped out of the country. Now, in terms of agriculture, are these still small uh, businesses, or, or are there are there some major uh, entities now that, that that grow different products? It's a limited number of um, other products. Uh, tobacco has changed. It, 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 when you had a uh, Burlington Industries or, or Dan River Mills, you could work at a shift job eight hours and then have a small harvest of tobacco. Most of that's gone now. Most of the tobacco is raised on larger farms and uh, it's more concentrated. What about hemp? There was a move a few years ago to uh, to encourage the production of hemp. I, I think that uh, I think it's a great opportunity, and we've been looking at it. Uh, we've been one of the research places was at the uh, Virginia Tech uh, Research Center in Blackstone in Nottoway County. Uh, they were they learned something about varieties, uh, but it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. But until the federal law changes, That's true. we can't do much with it. Yeah. But hemp is a great product to make uh, any number of things, uh, and it, it, it is a native crop of Virginia. So it it it's great with the in our our climate. Uh, it, one of the uh, one of the things they learned at uh, at at uh, the, in Blackstone was that uh, they had a problem with goldfinches. Goldfinches. Goldfinches just love the seeds of oh, wow. of the uh, hemp, and they never expected that. Well, to them, it was a treat they weren't <laughs> familiar with, but they loved it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to discuss uh, the, the, a few pieces of legislation you're involved in this session. Uh, there's one dealing with uh, non-repairable and rebuilt vehicles. What's that all about? Uh, it, Virginia does things different than the other 49 states, and we require the insurance companies to assess a percentage damage to a vehicle, so that if you wreck your car and uh, they've got a 38 percent or a 43 or 58 percent damage, uh, and that becomes kind of complicated when you start talking about getting parts and using parts uh, to rebuild or, or redo other cars uh, so that that uh, North Carolina, for example, uh, where a lot of my folks rebuild, get, get mm -hmm. parts to rebuild, uh, there the car, it's wrecked, you know. Right. You, you don't worry about percentages. You worry about is it worth repairing right. or not. And then, then you can bring that car up to Virginia and then you can redo a lot of the issues that were involved in the wreck, uh, but then it's a hard, long process to get it retitled because in, it, we we have this different language that we're speaking. So we're trying mm -hmm. to bring that into um, 
in accord with the other 49 states so that uh, our our folks who want to do this as an avocation or a profession right. can do it. Right. Uh, the, there's another matter, de matter dealing with Alzheimer's disease and disorders, and I know there's a commission that your bill would extend its life, so to speak. Obviously, Alzheimer's is, is a very serious disease. It's something that, as our population ages in the Commonwealth and nationwide, can become very costly. So I'm sure that's part of this study. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, there's a lot that we don't know about Alzheimer's, but we do know that we're through health and science we're living longer, and so a higher percentage of us as we age will become incapacitated in some fashion. Uh, and, and anything we can do to try to change that equation, we need to. So that requires some research in universities, it requires uh, some money to, to there, there are people that are willing to give money for that research, but you need to be they, that to be coordinated, and that's what that uh, commission okay. does. Now what about uh, retirement plans for private employees? The AARP came to me last summer and they said, you know, they had some fantastic statistics on the number of people that were retiring with just Social Security. And that, as you know, is not a very livable wage. Uh, so, the, the, and none of the, and a lot of those folks had no retirement whatsoever. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have jobs that uh, dealt with that. So, we came up with the idea that maybe it would be a good idea to try to train people to save. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, if they work for companies that didn't have didn't have retirement programs, uh, try to set up an option where private company could um, get more involved in, in encouraging individuals to create a, 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 a retirement fund. And once, once they learned that taking a couple of bucks this week and next week wasn't going to kill them, but at the same time it would give them something else in retirement. Uh, on the state side, even with the uh, deficit that the Commonwealth is facing, I take it that our retirement system is, is, is in pretty good shape. Last year, we were concerned that the, the numbers that uh, from the governor's projection on, on revenue was a little higher than we thought it was that it might be. And so we set aside, uh, we put in 660 million extra dollars in the Virginia retirement system that we, we knew we were going to owe because uh, we borrowed some during the recession. Uh, we pay, paid all that back in one lump rather than stretching it out. Uh, we wanted to have one-time expenses in, that we could uh, put in or take out as necessary uh, rather than building up more bureaucracy. And there have been some reforms in the state retirement system over the, over the past several years. For example, uh, we've gone away from a defined benefit pr plan to more of a 401k kind of system. Uh, more of a combination so that, uh, that, that, that they're that there is more money from the individual's paycheck going into the retirement.